The race for the presidential nominations is heating up, and candidates are vying for the women's vote. Annenberg Media political reporter Allie Main joins us for more. Thanks for coming in, Allie. Thank you for having me. Both of the Democratic presidential candidates are appealing to women voters, and we want to take a closer look at how the leading candidates' platforms are making an impact in the polls. Both Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders have specifically discussed the, cha the changes they would make for women if elected. Their ideas may seem similar, but both candidates do touch on a few slightly different issues. If elected, Clinton plans to pass the Paycheck Fairness Act, a bill she introduced as a senator which will help women achieve equal pay in the workplace. She also plans to fight for the paid family leave and combat violence against women, but her campaign website hasn't offered specific plans on either issue. Like Clinton, Sanders says if elected, he will sign the Paycheck Fairness Act. Sanders also says he will work to give parents 12 weeks of paid family leave after the birth of a child. And the Vermont senator has made a point that he will only nominate someone who supports Roe versus Wade as a Supreme Court justice. So Allie, how do you think Clinton and Sanders are successfully appealing to women voters? Um, well, I think with Hillary Clinton, although you said her plans weren't clearly outlined um, step by step on her website, I think she's coming at it a lot of her plans from the rhetoric of her being a woman. Um, she's saying, stand with me because I'm a woman and I will take care of you and your needs as women. Um, and for Bernie Sanders, I think a lot of his comes from the angle of him just kind of trying to appeal to the people who government might forget and if women feel like they have been wronged by big government in the past, Bernie is trying to say that he can fix that. Now, on Super Tuesday, we saw Hillary Clinton obviously have a little bit more success, as well as in the women voters, speaking in terms of generally, but again, specifically with the women. Bernie Sanders had 46% in Oklahoma to Hillary's 48, even though Sanders won the state. And in some other states, like Virginia, Hillary took 70% of the women's votes. Why do you think Hillary's had so much success among women? Well, the thing is with Hillary is that she has, in all age demographics except for 18 to 24, Hillary has been winning more of the female vote, but in that younger demographic. Bernie's actually winning more of the female vote. And I think the reason for that is, is these women in the older demographics really do support Hillary. I wouldn't say just because she's a woman, but they really appreciate the fact that um, a woman is in that position to maybe become president because, you know, maybe them and their careers had faced some issues in the past um, kind of reaching those higher positions. But I think these much younger females who may be new voters, may be new to the workplace, new to kind of adult life, um, are kind of more interested in the social issues that Bernie's talking about in general than just the fact that Hillary is a woman. So I think that might be where that divide is. And the reason why Hillary has a lot more women supporters, but Bernie is taking a lot of the younger women. Now on the other side, among the Republican frontrunners, Marco Rubio is really the only one that has expressed clear specifics about his plans for women's rights, speaking specifically about paid maternity leave. While Donald Trump and Ted Cruz haven't really specified much, why do you think that is, and which of the three do you think appeals most to women voters? Well, I think that, um the thing with Rubio's paid family leave is it's a little bit different than both Hillary's and Bernie's because um, it's, from what I understand, it's a it's a tax cut for companies that do offer family leave, but it's not like Hillary's and Bernie's kind of like a more mandated, all companies have to give women paid family leave. So it's, it's a little bit different in that way. And I, I think the reason why he and the other candidates as well um, aren't really... Um, emphasizing these policies as much is just the simple fact that they don't think government should really play that role, so they're not really focusing it on, it on it as much. This week, 11 more states have their primary races, so we'll see how candidates on both sides of the aisle do. Allie, thanks for coming on with us here at The Thank Current. Thank you for having me.